Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighting. Go to pelican.com. The 153 Bait Company. For all your hard and soft bait needs, go to the 153anglers.com. Now let's get this show started. Welcome back, everybody, to The Reel Down. Uh, Y'all will be catching this on a Wednesday morning like usual. Uh, With me, as always, my host with the most, Drew Gregory, a familiar face we have down with us tonight, Susie Q. She's back for some more attorney stuff with us. Susie Q. What's uh, up? (laughs) What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, hanging in there, hanging in there. Had a little uh, event here a few minutes ago, but uh, I, I want to get right into that because you weren't your normal like there. level of cheeriness, and I need to know why. All right, so listen to what just happened to me, and I almost couldn't make this podcast here. Um, oh wow! About and and maybe forty five minutes ago, hour ago, I'm getting my son in his bath, right? And he really wanted to read this new book. This this came in the mail today. You know, that little small book. It's in shrink wrap. And uh, you know that plastic shrink wrap? You know, I probably got some laying around here where it, it tightens down to stuff real tight. And you need to get a pair of scissors or your fingernails if you're a girl and you got some longer fingernails. I don't. So I just simply grabbed the, you know, grabbed my teeth like and ripped it, you know, like you do just to start the shrink wrap, the plastic open. And when I did it, I ripped the piece off and I happened to just inhale at that exact time with that piece and it went down my throat and it blocked my, I guess my windpipe went down the wrong pipe (gasps) and my body just reacted. Like I've never seen before, just out of control, just projectile vomiting everywhere all over the place. And uh, I mean, I'm it scratched my throat up pretty bad. Oh, I bet. And I still feel like it's not out, but I, but I know it is. I called a a friend that's an, uh, used to be an ER um, nurse. He said that it's, you know, it's out because you'd either swallow, have swallowed it or, you know, vomited it out. Projected and obviously, it out. Yeah, projected it out. So since I happen to be vomiting, he said it's out because you would not be talking and acting normal right now if it was still no. down in your lungs. You'd ha- be having a lot more problems. So yeah. the good news is it's out. But the, the, the bad news is it was pretty traumatic because I couldn't like oh. yell, yell to anybody to help. And I'm just it's just all just happening. My son's, you know, in the bath. And uh, playing, and it's just like crazy. So anyway, um, we cleaned it all up, and I, I finally am just kind of, I'm just a little bit more chill tonight. You know what I mean? A little wake up call on how yeah. quickly um, life can, you know, like. Man, I've I've been choked like that before. Uh, I was like 12 or 13, and I was just taking like a piece of cotton and just like blowing it up in the air, mm-hmm. and somehow. It, when it would come down, and I, you know, you like just kind of yeah. keep it going. And right when it came down, I inhaled at one time. And like you said, like yeah. your body like goes into like fight mode yeah. and like no, no voice, no air. You can't <coughs> scream, can't swallow. I didn't throw up. That's crazy. But yeah, I know that like the panic sets in, man. That's right. That's scary. <laughs> but so, hey. and, you, and your kids probably just like. Yeah, he, just, he he was just over there on the other side of the other room, so he, I could you know whatever. And my wife was downstairs, so I kind of was on my own there for a minute until I could. I finally got it out and could you know get her to help help me out. So anyway, she oh, made no me, she, saran she, wrap she, for Drew. No, no, no. I'm never gonna do that again. And oh. for sure, I learned a lesson there. She made me some nice hot tea, so I'm sipping on this and hopefully Aww. be feeling better. But anyway, I'm good to, to talk about this. I may just not be as is upbeat and cheery and uh, i'm i am glad that it wasn't anything worse um yeah because like yeah. i could tell by w- the way you were talking when you came in i was like dude did he just get some really bad news or something <laughs> like yeah and then you were like well, we can talk about it on the pod and i was like okay well it can't be that bad i don't think he would air out right you know personal <laughs> stuff on here so but well we're glad you're here i'm glad that uh yeah. there's not like a camera rolling and paramedics in the background and Drew turning blue yeah. or anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, real quick, man, real quick. I did just get a message from, you remember last week, I did tell you that Travis Dawkins had a big tournament. He was setting up, I believe it's in the Southeast, probably in Georgia somewhere, Alabama. I don't know. I told him we're on right now. If you want to have him on to, to just quickly come on and talk yeah. about it. Does that work? 
Yeah, no, we can. Uh, we're okay. kind of just yeah. chilling and talking stuff, man. We'll uh, we'll bring it in. All right, we'll bring them in, and, and then we'll kind of work around that. But we want to make sure we get that information out there for for all those who aren't going to be able to make the kayak, kayak bass fishing national championship because this is the weekend following the KBFNC, which is a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But I'm sure if you're fishing the NC, you probably don't want to fish Saturday, Sunday, also or whatever day this is. Um, you know, so if you're not going, this is a good one to to enter. It's a pretty big event they're putting together. So when he pops on, he pops on. In the meantime, yeah. we'll just roll. We'll, we'll just roll with it. Well, Susie, how you been doing? What's up? What's uh, new? I've uh, I've been doing pretty good. So um, latest news is uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Uh, I competed in a teams thing, uh, the Crossroads Kayak Bass Classic, um, and we yeah had... we covered it kind of. Oh, did you? Awesome! Because the the tourney it was yeah, a team yeah. event, right? Yes, yeah. yeah so yep. it was because it wasn't on Tourney X, and I was confused. It was, um, but it was just as individuals um, because Tourney X right. isn't programmed yet to have a two day teams tournament. It, no. it takes a lot of coding right. to, to get that all figured out. So it went, yeah, Tourney X just went by Angler. And so um, the host of the event, uh, Indiana Kayak Anglers, they did like the, the team score all in the background and everything. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, but, cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, I competed for the first time, um, which in the past two years, I've uh, been just helping out with the event. I was TD for the event uh, uh, for two of those years, too. So it was actually uh, pretty nice to actually compete in this. And uh, we took first place. <laughs> so, yeah. In the season on a win. Yeah, buddy. So, yeah, I got a nice little plaque thing. And I'm just like, all right, now I can start my my wall of fame. <laughs> <laughs> you're on, you're on your way. Susie. That's right. That's a, hey, what a way to end the season. I, you know, you're on a high note now Heck you know, yeah! through the winter. So that's exciting. I feel like that would just give you more drive to like find another tournament or find some, you know, it's like, Nope, season's not done yet. I got one right. more somewhere. I, I kind of have that, that little inkling right now, but like the really sad thing is, is well, at least locally, um, all my local lakes are going to be closing here soon because of uh, waterfowl hunting season. So I need to go out to Banner Marsh and see when they close because it's it's going to be here soon. And before I know it, like I won't really have much of anywhere to go. But I've been trying to think of like somewhere to go. You know, I mean, I, I got my salmon fix. Uh, Fly south weeks. for the winter. <laughs> Yeah. Gunnersville yeah. never closes. Right. Oh, man, right. I was it also like, doesn't always fish good, so take that too. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, even though like it kind of was the end of my tournament season, like it's it's definitely given me drive for like things I want to do for next year. Um, just you know, like podcast wise, mm-hmm. I want to get my she shed. Um, hopefully somewhat kind of complete before spring of next year. Mm-hmm. So I've got some goals. So. Get to work I- at them. <laughs> um all right i was about to ask you a question and then we talked about well, lakes and i forgot <laughs> well i'll mention something and i don't want to get us off into a, a tangent because i know that you and i could definitely do that jimmy but um yes we can susie, rabbit hole kings yeah rabbit hole susie you're talking about a team I, I like this team concept because as you guys may or may not remember the uh river bass and trail that I ran, we had a team component to it. It was a two man mm-hmm. team and we had a team champion, you know, team, it run concurrently just like yours did. Now our system did allow it. Uh, we were using um, a website I developed with a, a group out of Florida. It's whatever. You don't need to know all the back end, but basically <laughs> it was, it was kayak fishing series.com and it did have a leaderboard for the team and for the individual. So we were oh, able nice. to keep up. So, and then, but here's the thing. The team thing, I think, is really, really cool. So mm-hmm. um, I, just, I think it's something we need to explore more in kayak fishing because it's safer to be together. And, and you can run two-man team events concurrently with the individual events, pay the extra entry fee to enter a team. Yes. I mean, it's it feels like a kayak fishing thing to me, doesn't it? It's a camaraderie. Yeah. It just feels it, right. And yeah. we, we did a – based off of – like, I never got to – do a river bass and thing that like i came in as that was kind of like going out uh Mm -hmm. but when i was working with our local club up here in north alabama i would hold throwdowns with the two-man team format like that and that was fun like everybody enjoyed that we would make it where like 
at least one of the fish had to be because it was best five. One of the fish had to come from, you know, each angler Person. that way. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was fun. A lot of people enjoyed it. And you get beat it by is. a team that you're definitely not thinking that's going to take your money. And I, I'd like to see more of it, like two man, three man. That's one thing that I'll give the KFL thing that's going on is mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. I don't really care about the home and away thing. But right. it would be cool to like something that's already established going on just to, like you said, man, the, the team thing's happening. You just pay a little extra and the everything's just keeping up with it on its own. That way you don't have yeah. to like do anything separate. Right. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, the, because here's the thing, like, I like what you're saying too, that the KFL thing is cool. And I don't know, but like the importance in our sport is it's hard to get any individual, um, sort of, I don't know, focus on any individuals in the KFL. It's all, it's like, there's a team name and that's kind of what you go by. And that, and unfortunately we as anglers who are trying to do this more full time, obviously you need that build up of, you know, resume stuff, individual. And and that's not really possible in that series. But, but like you're saying, I mean, like we're talking about, if you did it concurrent, you know, in conjunction with like, like if Hobie BOS or KBF, they had a, two-man team component that ran right alongside their events that'd be pretty cool to pay extra and just be part of the team thing i think that'd be pretty cool but anyway um and and then of course the national championship has a team component to it which which Mm -hmm. is kind of fitting that i'm wearing my motor guide uh sweatshirt because that's the the team that i'm i'm on for that so that you know that's pretty cool so anyway we'll see if that ever happens and one way i think i hope it will happen at the u.s open i know it was postponed this year cancel postpone whatever but i'm hoping that that becomes an event that will have a separate individual leaderboard and a team component to it that's what i'm hoping is that that will fill a little bit of that need for that in that one main event every year the u.s open because personally i feel like we need like we have um you know the, the kbfnc we have the hobie toc we've we've got the the bass nation kayak series championship we've got you know three championships already if you if the u.s open becomes that fourth big one I really feel like we should be mirroring golf. Like there's majors, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And maybe I've brought this up on here before, but there's like four majors in golf. There's enough time between them for the build up. All the best anglers are there competing. And if you want to take it a step further, uh, which just happened in golf, if you guys follow, the Ryder Cup is the one of the most watched and the biggest and highly anticipated events every two years, Europe versus the United States, and they go to Europe and then next two years they go to to the US. But not here's what I think should happen. Again, I don't want to get off on a rabbit hole too far, but I hear I probably already have. But here's what I think would be cool if it happened: is if you you know how obviously we don't have a com- competition with Europe. There's no European bass anglers, right? And that nowhere in the other part of the world close by really has bass like we do. But where are our rivals? Where are the where's the debate? Like, you know what I mean? Like who's Mexico? Better? Mexico, kind of. Mm-hmm. They're kinda. there, but but you know what? Where it is even more, where you hear everyone always just bashing each other about, we're better here, we're better here. No, we're better. It's within the regions. The West mm-hmm. guys are like, well, we got we got the hammers. But then the Northeast guys are always like, I'm telling you, we are we know how to fish up here. We can do mm-hmm. it. And then the, the, the Midwest guys, there's a lot of Ohio in the top 10 in the AOI standings. And, and Midwest, not just Ohio, but happened to be a, a lot of Ohio, I was noticing. Uh, and then the Southeast, which is the Mecca for bass fishing. If you built a Ryder Cup style event that happened every two years and you took and you had a, a official world, you know, or not world, national kayak rankings like, you know, I really want to see happen one day. But and you, you went on those standings like who's going to make the team if the team's whatever, four or five people per region. I don't know. But you go by that and then those people bracket it out or whatever to to face off. That would be killer man killer <laughs> the kayak fishing world cup yeah <laughs> yeah so something like that because then we could say we could settle the debate finally you know who is that's right who really has the better anglers which region and the truth the truth is one region doesn't have better anglers than okay. the other as a whole i, I got a question you drew you've lived in a few different places which region do you technically represent <laughs> The one you're living in now, or the one you, Pro- you like the most? <laughs> probably, yeah, probably the one I'm living in now. Because, like, um, like Russ, Russ is another name that comes to mind. It's like he's a, you know, he's the Cali boy who moved to Tennessee, and he hammered out there, and he hammered here. Do you claim home, or do you claim 
home now. That's right. <laughs> you know? Blanchard's the same way. He yeah. Was, uh, He's New York. York. New York, and then went. So, I mean, I, I think that there's good anglers. And when you when you are just taking the top four or five, I think they're all comparable. Top four or five from every region. Then it's just going to come down to, dude, out of out of 20 times, if we did this thing 20 times, you'd probably have five times one by one in a region, maybe five, five by another, five by another, it'd be pretty darn even, you know what I mean? I think, but it's just depending also on which lake you fish. Cause there's going to be some sort of a quasi home lake advantage, but yeah, I feel like you have to pay Texas and Florida by themselves. <laughs> yeah. Cause we don't want to claim them down here, but God knows that they'll, Oh, Texas is the best. Florida is the best. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but anyway, here so, we uh, we were going to go right into the, uh, the fantasy stuff, but I see that uh, our guest is here, and if he's ready, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to come in. All right, yeah. so we're going to bring him on, Drew, and I'll let you introduce him, and we'll get to it. Sure, sure. What's going on, Travis Dawkins? Hey, buddy. Um, listen, Travis, if you guys don't know Travis, didn't you, didn't you fish the old River Bassin Trail? Or at least a couple? I did. Uh, that, yeah. That, that was... Uh... One of the first tournaments I ever did. I think it might have been the second or third tournament I did uh, on the Catawba. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about that in the team division, and you were were you on a team by the, by chance? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Rush and I won the team division that event. That's right. So there you go. See, we were talking about how cool it would be to have a, another trail, to just bringing a team component, and hopefully the U.S. Open, if when that comes back next year, could be one event that has it um, because. That's part of that whole Pan American thing, which is the U.S. team and all that. So it would make sense. But I, I think it'd be cool to have the team. But anyway, Travis Dawkins from Georgia. And tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what you got going on. Because you messaged me on Facebook saying you'd like to plug something. And and I said, well, hey, man, let's let's get you on the show real quick. And, and maybe you can spend five or ten minutes with us and and uh, tell us about this event. And just Yeah. Just, yeah. Just so, <clears throat> So you've always inspired me with, uh, you know, the river stuff. And I came from the whitewater kayaking world. So um, whenever I get a chance to, to put on events, um, which I've done, I joined the Peach State uh, Kayak Anglers Club down in Georgia. Um, I'm one of five board members and we put on roughly, you know, eight to 10 events a year. Um, so we had a chance this year to, to put one on in my, in my home um my home county in, in uh, Cherokee County in Canton, Georgia, uh, which I'm from here. And um, I had the opportunity to put 50 river miles on, and I did. And I was like, we need, we don't need to hold the anglers back. Like, they can fish all of Lake Altoona and all of um, up to Etowah till, till Trout Waters, basically. Um, so it's our end-of-the-year tournament. Um, it's going to be huge for our angler of the year race. Uh, we've got – awesome sponsors the dugout bait and tackle is our main sponsor they're, um they're giving us either a hobie out back or uh the one step down from that i'm still waiting to hear on a, another big announcement that we're hoping we'll, we'll have by the end of the week um but for a local tournament um i feel like we've put together a huge prize pack uh and maybe I could just read them out here we got a new new canoe unlimited for the open division of our tournament um, and we've got a tournament of champions, which anybody that won a tournament in the state of Georgia, um, they are going to win that, the Outback or, um, the right. other, the Hobie sponsored by, by a dugout. Um, we've got a Reformation Brewery on board. They give us over a thousand dollars worth of stuff. So it, it's going to be like a two day tournament. So on Saturday, after everybody gets done fishing, they can come to the event venue, which is a brewery. We've got half off beers, um, and then they've they've sponsored. Um, I'm gonna come hang out with y'all. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna come hang out after we fish. All you know, fellowship with each other. Um, we've got an Orion cooler. We're giving to second place in the open. Reformation's gonna put 48 beers in, in that Orion cooler, uh, mm-hmm. along with Reformation prize packs, which include hats and shirts and um, gift cards and six packs and 12 packs. Um, we got NRS that gave us over a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Um, and we've got, let's see, we've got Jimbo on Lanier. He gave us a trip for two on Lake Lanier, uh, which I don't know if you guys have, have been to Lake Lanier, but he's kind of a big deal. 
Um, yeah. And he's also got his weekly uh, fishing reports that that are awesome. I mean, he he literally gives you the spots and the techniques, and he's amazing. Um, but we've we've put together what I feel like is a huge um, opportunity for you know if you're not fishing the KBFNC, which which mm-hmm. I, I really wanted to, but it was buttoned up close to you know this exact weekend, October sixteenth uh, and seventeenth. Um, then I, I'd be fishing the KVFNC and I was thinking about driving back to fish this, but, mm-hmm. uh, we're just inviting anybody that wants to come. Um, you can message us, Peach State Kayak Anglers, message me, John Rush, Nick Dyer, or Jason Alford. Cool. But hopefully I didn't butcher that at all. I mean, if y'all have <laughs> Sounds <questions>. good. <laughs> so it, how yeah. much is it, how much is it to enter? So it's, it's going to be $125. Okay. Um, and there's and cash so, cash payout too, right? I mean, yeah, cash payout. So uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. So it's cash on top of on top of the other prizes as well. Yeah, it's going to be a hundred percent plus payback. Right. Um, you know, I put together the payout scale based on if a hundred people enter. Um, we're notorious. Everybody signs up the last minute. Um, we've already got twenty one signed up, and we're we still got eleven days to to register, but. Um, we are definitely going to pay out more than a hundred percent. If a hundred people show up, first place will be thirty-three hundred. Second place, twenty-three twenty-five. Third place, sixteen sixty. Um, and day one, big bass would be a thousand. Day two, big bass Ooh. would be a thousand. No. Uh, wow. Now that's that's if a hundred. Oh, where I'm going up. next weekend? <laughs> yeah. If fifty, if fifty show up, it'll be five hundred for big bass a day. Um, but right. I mean, we're not quite on on the national tournament level, but we wanted to give people an opportunity to come, um, you know, from Alabama, North Carolina, Tennessee, you know, to make it worth the drive and to come see Canton, Georgia, um, who they've, you know, they've been very generous with, with sponsoring us and getting behind the club and, um, you know, awesome. supporting local anglers. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you make sure uh, you tell Jason that, you're the reason I didn't get him on because Drew told me you were coming on and then Jason was texting me about wanting to shout out a tournament. And then when I was looking into it, I was like, it's the same tournament. <laughs> like, that's like, I guess they all two weren't talking. It, but that's Jason, if you listen, my fault. That's why I didn't get back to you. I should have told you yeah. we were already covering it, but here you go. Covered. Yeah, I, yeah, I texted them and told them to post something up on our page, so. Yeah, awesome. for sure. That's awesome. Now that's a great uh, fishery. You know, the Etowah River and Lake Alatoona. It's it's really good. I encourage people to go check it out. I'm obviously, uh, well, not obviously. People listening may not know this, but I'm from Georgia, from just outside of Atlanta, where I grew up, and have fished those waters. And man, those are the spotted bass that are the they're actually the Alabama bass. Technically, they're the, part of the, the Coosa yep. the Coosa strain. So they're we'll take claim. Not, technically not spotted bass, but anyway, they're Alabama bass, and they're the ones that you want to be catching. So if you've never uh, fished the, those waters, you should go check it out and have a good time. And it sounds like you just need to get one good bite to win a thousand bucks potentially uh, for big bass. So that's pretty exciting. The other thing I was going to say while you're on here, Travis, um, is you fished a few national tournaments this year, done fairly well, I remember. And weren't you at the the Ike and Ellie event? And you were. I did. Yeah, you were I close really, there. I really wanted to qualify. Uh, so my wife was like you want to go up there last minute and we got uh we got a babysitter for our two young kids and we drove um we drove all the way up there sorry i just kicked something over um yeah we drove all <laughs> the way up one of the there kids. <laughs> and i missed qualifying by one spot yeah so, uh, oh, yeah uh, but, uh, that's my kind I of life proud, Dude. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you would have been proud of me drew i i stuck to my river roots i went out there on the flats to try to do what i canelli was doing and I was, I was getting blown around. I couldn't do it. I didn't have a foot pedal drive. So I went up ter- there to the dam and in the rapids and I fished for smallmouth. Um, and then I, you know, I, I was paddling down this four miles of, you know, tail race and I, I found this little, um, this little creek. I mean, it must have been 20 yards wide. And I had to, I, I paddled up that thing and I had to wheelchair up these rapids and I found some 16 and a half, 17 inch smallmouth, like up this tiny creek. And so uh, my only regret is I I missed a 17 at the very end that would have put me in third place and qualified me. But, you know, that's fishing and, yeah, you know, it just gives me hope for future events. I've got a few Hobie checks, so I'm I'm happy with that. That's right. 
you're having a good season. And it seems sounds to me too like you just need a few more people to enter the event, and it would have paid out. It, one more place would have been the top ten yes. percent or whatever it was. So that was they kind ran of a low, it down. Yeah, they ran it down. That that, that didn't help you out either. So you kind of got. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but Double. I'm having a ton of fun fishing these events. I, I one day I hope my wall looks like yours, but you're you're a tough guy <laughs> to catch. No, man, I I appreciate it. And I was joking with them with these guys before we actually got on air, which is probably worth saying now that I feel a little bit. I, I don't know. I feel awkward sometimes. I just put this wall together and re- rearranged it, um, and I'm proud of. <laughs> I'm obviously very proud of all these finishes, but it was just something to do with these checks. But it, it was weird. It's like it, it helps establish credibility for you know when I'm doing podcasts and videos and stuff. But at the same time, I feel a little bit, a little bit awkward in front of it sometimes as well. But kind of, kind of have to do it also. So it's just like ah. But anyway, um, hopefully one day. <laughs> I know Susie Q was just saying she had a great finish. You're you're well on your way, and you know, I just think you guys have have the skill and the talent to do it. And I've I've seen you, man. I, I mean, like you said, you won the river bass and stuff, and, and you're not. It didn't come out of the blue that you did so well up there at the Chesapeake, and you've done so well at Hobie's. So when I see your name, I'm not surprised. Oh, well, thank you, Drew. Yeah. Well, man, we uh we appreciate you coming on and shouting it out. And uh, just one more time before we uh we let let you go, just a quick rundown. Uh, how can they get in touch with you? Uh. And what are the dates? And one more time, what's the entry? Uh, so you can get in touch with us on Facebook, uh, Peach State Kayak Anglers, um, or you can, uh, I'm going to butcher the email address, but I think it's uh, pskayakanglers at gmail.com. Um, and the date is October 16th and 17th. So, you know, KBFNC is Wednesday through Friday. We're Saturday and Sunday, a two day event. $125 entry fee paying back over 100% because um, we've got a little support and some awesome non-cash prizes, including new canoe unlimited, um, a Hobie and possibly a third kayak. Stay, stay tuned for that. Um, I don't want to, don't want to say it just yet, but uh, nice. Nice, man. Very nice. Awesome. On Facebook. Well, we appreciate you coming on here and shouting it out. Yeah, thank you for giving me the the opportunity, and uh, we just we hope this turns out to be a great event. Heck yeah, awesome man! I think so. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing you soon. We'll have you on the show again. I guarantee it. <laughs> oh yeah! All right, <laughs> thank you very much. All right. See you, buddy. See, See you guys. You. Yeah, hopefully we we'll have them on with a win. You know, it'll be a win exactly. Or something. But uh, hey, I'm going to be refreshing Tourney X. Uh, I think a good bit on the way back from the NC because their event is Saturday and Sunday. That the you know the KBF NC is. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with the results on Saturday. So hopefully I'm still around that day. And then nice. I'll be I'll be driving back Saturday and, and Sunday and refreshing and keeping up with that event as well. So should I may see if I can talk some of somebody to go do that with me. Cause I've I've never been over there at oh, all. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Well, that was cool. Uh, I always like when people reach out to us and want to, you know, shout something out. We always encourage it. If you had a killer tournament or crazy stories you know you can always get in touch with any of us but uh like i said before i was gonna let you and Susie talk a little bit about the updates on the fantasy stuff so i will sit back and go ahead queen <laughs> yeah go go for it Suze. Huh. <laughs> well uh in case you guys don't know um i have been doing all of the uh data entry for the fantasizers. So after each event has concluded, um, I have AJ who will send me the payouts for the anglers. And then Amanda will send me KBF. And then I'm also in touch with, um, I think his name is John, maybe uh, from Bass, uh, who gives John me. John Stewart. John Stewart. Yeah. I, you know, I think that is. Yeah. And so uh, he'll send me the uh, payouts uh, for that as well. And so I have this huge spreadsheet going that uh, currently has, let's see here, how many angler names I have on this thing now. Uh, Oh, I scrolled down too far. Let's see here. Uh, 339 anglers on it. (laughs) Jesus. So, yeah. So, like, I kind of started like midway into it. So I kind of built the database off of uh, 
fantasizer. And then like I did a little backtracking just to make sure everything was up to date. Um, all the anglers were on there. And then moving forward, as each event happened, uh, I would update uh, cash payouts and then add anglers uh, that weren't already on the list and so on and so forth. So like I'm actually going through and double checking that everything is up to date on my end compared to the Fantasizer site, which is mm -hmm. uh, it's a little challenging sometimes to navigate yeah, <laughs> on the back yeah, end of things. But yeah, you're killing it. You're killing it, though. I mean, we, we appreciate it. You're killing it. And then what's cool about this is people don't know. This is also tracking a money list for, mm -hmm. you know, at least those three national trails where you have a lot of the same names fishing the, you know, KBF Trail Series, the Hobie BOS and the Bass Nation Kayak Series. So it's pretty cool that, that you know, even if you're not in the game currently playing it, what we're talking about now, you're going to get a little bit of insight to how much money people are making and then also we'll i'm sure we'll go over the, the guys in the, in the lead right now in the in the lead in the fantasy game um we got some familiar names up top here so pretty cool yeah <laughs> well Susie, uh why don't you if you have it right there in front of you why don't you start with that who are the the uh, top 10 earning anglers all right well we'll go we will start with the top 10. So uh, number one, uh, Russ Snyder's coming in with 29,466. We got Mr. Jody Queen in second with 26,073. Mark Pendergraf uh, with 20,500. Ewing Miner with 16,700. Brian Howell in six with 15,945. Mr. Drew Gregory with uh, 14,902. Not Guillermo, too shabby. <laughs> Guillermo oh. Gonzalez in eighth with 14,483. Cody Milton in ninth with 12,521. And in 10th, we got Nate Gloria with 10,225. <laughs> What I like about that list is the yeah. the one name that stood out to me and shows how being consistent can do it is Guillermo. Guillermo had the the recent win, but he's just been consistent. Like you always hear him up there, but he's not been, you know, you know, that top guy or top second, third, but he's on that list. He, like it's yeah, I don't know. It sure. just shows what consistency does mm -hmm. for you, you know. He's had a couple uh, wins too. He had a win on KBF earlier this year. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. the, he broke a record. I, I mean, I believe yeah. it's a record, hundred and ten something. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that was and, insane. And, and then, like, and that, said, that's he, probably he, our fault for not for or for me for not having those KBF thing dialed in because sometimes fishing chaos is a pain in the ass when I'm trying to <laughs> to keep up with things. So I do apologize for anybody that's had a big win on that this year and we hadn't got in touch with you. It's like on my list right here of things to do better on is covering those KBF folks. So, <laughs> right for sure. No consistency matters. I mean, I I've been I feel lucky to have as much as as I have because I haven't uh, had a win. And out of all the names you listed, everybody uh, everybody on that list has had a win. I'm almost positive, uh, if not even further down the list. So yeah, I, I feel lucky to have you know what I have, and I'm just I'm just hoping and praying that that maybe. The good Lord is saving my wins for these the two championships that are still to come. <laughs> <laughs> and if if not, that's okay. But I, I, that's cool to see how much money folks are making. Now, if you're listening to this, you're thinking, well, that's not that much. Some people are like, that's not that much money because maybe you're comparing it to the Bass Elite Series or MLF or the MPFL or whatever. But they also are paying $5,000 entry fees. Yeah. We're paying $260. Mm -hmm. This is like – you know penny slots and we're winning yeah. you know a quarter yeah, slots no. or whatever so it's impressive that's impressive numbers that's significant you know you take out the expenses and it still adds up to a decent that's a decent chunk of money you weren't expecting and now you know we got to go uh you know pay taxes on that because <laughs> we're, we're winning some some decent amount of money here this isn't like yeah. under 500 bucks at some local so kayak fishing's getting there is what i'm saying yeah we're getting there well uh susie go off of that and give us our top five or give us if I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it since you updated it, obviously, because you just did it. Um, if top five, if it's close, go to top ten. If it's still like pretty tight as far as your rankings go with your individuals. All right, hang on here. Let's see if I 
can get back to it. I'm going to play next year. I don't know why I didn't do it this year. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to get – I mean, we're going to make this – because we have Susie, who's crushing it now and is on it consistent and getting the uh, results. Like, literally, I think Monday or – Monday you usually have them in. Sunday night, Monday, they're, like, in. Right? I mean, or it depends yep. on how quickly people get you, your information. But – yeah. We're talking about this now. We're building all this up so that when we open it up this fall, we are going to have a ton of people playing this game because it gives you a reason to root for these anglers, to follow them on social media, to refresh those tourney X, you know, tournaments. To, it, it's it's exciting, man. It's not, dude. Trust me, I get it. It's not fantasy football where you're watching the game. We don't have live streaming yet, but guys, it it's it's if you're a fan of this sport, playing this fantasy game, I'm telling you, it makes it makes all the difference in how you feel about these people and how invested you are. And, and that's a win for everybody in the sport. The more investment we can have to the angle. I was thinking about it, or, you know, when as we were bringing it up, like I know a bunch of these folks, just like both of y'all do, you know, yeah. pick my team. And when they're not doing good, I'm going to call them. Be like, yo, <laughs> WTF, pick it up. <laughs> Get with the program, yo. I'm right. counting on yeah. you. Yeah. I paid for All you. Right. All right. You want- one of those guys, huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, bear with me here because I just updated it again because, yeah, there were still a couple of people who were off. So, all right, that is and I'm on the app. So okay. If, so it, if it's updated on the app, the Steel just... City Steel City Slickers are in the lead. I but I don't think know that's, that's still – yeah, I think that's still, still the case. Old. Okay. So right. now, yeah, just refresh the app just in case because, yeah, I just hit um, – Update okay. leaderboard. So, yeah, hopefully we should be good then. I believe so. Oh, right. And, and, and you may, on, on your desktop version, it may show you the name of the person. Uh, I, on the app, it, it only does. shows me team names. So, I only have team names. But right. so. we've got some familiar names down here, especially it looks like <laughs> even in, se- in seventh place, we have a familiar name. And uh, in third place, there's just some people I, I recognize. So, you let's go for to, it. Uh, yeah, you, you I can share my screen here and show yeah, you guys. Yeah, go for it. Sure, that's a good right. idea. Man, great idea, Susie. Yeah. I knew we, I knew we got been her around the block a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Share the screen. I mean, hey, if you're listening on audio, oh, that's her porn. Won't, this won't help you out. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> all right. Yeah, you know, all the people in the audio version think they're, they're visualizing something else popped up. Anyway, hey, no, that's how we get our nice YouTube time. views up. They're running <laughs> to YouTube go. right now, like oh. That's right. Like, oh, what is this? <laughs> That's true. Well, just I'm sorry, guys. If you're listening to audio version, it was it was the fish porn. That's what it was. <laughs> it was a big, a big, a big smolly on a catch board is what popped up on Susie's screen. That's right. And- Please like, subscribe, and follow. Though, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give it to us, Susie. Break it down. Uh- so looks like uh, first place. I'm just going to go by names of people. Um, so it looks like Katie Baca is uh, leading the pack right now with uh, 72,961 points. Wow. And second, yeah, which is. So is it? Tell me this just because I could be wrong. It's a okay. point per dollar. Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. It point is. Yep. Dollar. Okay. Dollars equal yep. points. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's six, six anglers. So do you want to? Say which angle she has or not yet. Uh, I, I, I have them here. I have. Them oh, you've you got want. them there. Okay. Yeah. I, I I'm not on that page yet. So I clicked on it so I can do that for us. I'll, I'll do that part. And then you just tell us. Who's it. So Katie has uh, Russ Snyder's who, of course, you know, is 29, four She, she had Brian Howe. So she, she kind of was in on the Brian Howe before we all knew who Brian Howe was when he took over BOS this year. And um, Ryan Lambert, 7,000 bucks. Um, Jamie Broad, Shane Williams, we've got zeros right now. And Mark Pendergraf was a huge get for her because that one event, yeah, the the kayak, you know, the Bass Nation Kayak Series Championship, twenty thousand five hundred dollars. So that's how she adds up the seventy two nine sixty one. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that's some really good <laughs> luck. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, and I'm not taking anything away from the anglers. Like Mark Pendergraf's obviously a really good angler, but just to like that's the only check or dollars he's got that's a pretty good one to have especially mm-hmm. on the fantasy side of it but anyway continue continue all right so in second we got mr phil robertson uh closing in on katie with uh seventy two thousand eight hundred twenty two. y'all so probably won't get that but is this the duck commander guy or is there another one <laughs> no 
I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's dope. I know you're talking it's about. Bad joke. <laughs> Continue. So, so yeah, I'll tell you who's on on uh, Phil's team. Now, this is an interesting strategy. First of all, that it just occurred here. I I, I just noticed it with Phil, and then the next uh, team down, they only picked four anglers. Now you can you can purchase six. There was a salary cap, right? It was fifty thousand dollars, and there was a salary cap on all these anglers, and you can only pick six. Well, Phil did something unique, and he only chose four. So he spent more. He went up, and so he has just he took two zeros. But he picked. He was able to to afford Jody Queen, Russ Snyder's, oh. Drew Gregory, and Matt Ball. And so obviously, <laughs> you know, with Russ and Jody being number one and two in earnings, I think I was what sixth or seventh in total earnings this to this point. And Matt Ball has two thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars. So, and we're all in the KBFNC, and we're all in the TOC. So, great job by Phil picking those four. Yeah, that could that could be a good jump for him because. Uh, yeah. First place not having Jody. I'm sure Jody will cash a check. I'm sure Drew's going to do good. So that could be at last minute showing right on up there. That's a that's an interesting move though. Mm-hmm. Go go for four that's big actually, ones. That's true cuz uh looking at Steel City Slickers like you just said number 1, Russ Snyder's will be at the NC and the TOC, but Brian Howe I'm not sure he's at the if he's at the KBFNC. Ooh. Ryan, Ryan oh, I Lambert, I, I know Ryan Lambert will not be. Jamie Broad, I don't know if he. I think he'll probably be there because he's in that area. Actually, that could end up being a good one. Because it doesn't Jamie isn't he from Louisiana? Isn't we thinking about? I think, I think he's he down is. south somewhere, isn't he? Yeah, I think I'm he is. Sure, yeah. Shane Williams will not be at. I don't think he'll be at the KBFNC. And Mark Pendergraph, I don't know if he fishes KBF, so he may not be. So there's a lot of room to be made up by <laughs> Phil Robinson here in second place. You're going to see a lot part. more people picking four next year just because of <laughs> yeah. what's about to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you picked the right ones. And, and uh, in third place, which you can tell us, Susie, what you think, but um, about third, but uh, the same strategy is happening in third. So tell us who's in third, and I'll, I'll read over the names they have. All right. So in third place, we got Ryan Van Tyne with 71,641 points. Yes. And he is right in striking distance uh, as mm-hmm. well. Uh, we all know Ryan, a very vocal kayak angler, a uh, great dude. So look, he's got Jody Queen, Russ Snyder's, and my, myself again, Drew Gray. The same three, where he slightly, you know, lost a little bit of money. He's got Donald Harsham, and Donald's won twelve hundred dollars, so he still won some money. But that Matt Ball pick that you know the previous, what was it, uh, Phil Robertson had, is the difference right now. So we will see what happens. I'm not sure if Harsham's going to be at the KBFNC, but. Um, he may or may not be qualified for the TOC. I don't know. But anyway, that's, uh, again, four anglers making it work. So fourth place, who's next? All right. Fourth place, Mr. David Klosterman. Was I don't want to use that name. His team name is awesome. Yeah, I, I hot chicken name. figures. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, hot chicken figures. Yeah. <laughs> Some hot of the, the team names on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They are good. So right. Hot Chicken Fingers mm-hmm. has – he went with four as well. So, Jimmy, you might be right. More people might go with four, just picking the right four. And he's got uh, – he went a little bit different. Russ Snyder's Jody Queen totally dissed me for Cody Milton. Come on. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Cody, uh, unbelievable angler, fishes tons of tournaments, and he's won $12,521. So – Right there, good pick. And then it was smart. Went with Jackson or thirty five hundred dollars for Jackson this year. So that was a, a smart move. All right. Next pl- next is fifth place. Who do we got? All right, fifth place. We got Jesse Halverson. Hey, that's a that's a good homie of mine. He's right down the road. Nice. That's right. That's right. I don't know why good he's job, on Jesse. my report twice. Um if you so- knew this guy's ego, it makes total sense. <laughs> Like <laughs> when I saw his name twice, I was like, did the asshole get in on it twice? Like, <laughs> did he make two teams? <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, yeah, they're both the same score. It's uh, 70,626 points. Yeah, it's on the app. It's only showing up once. So I don't know why okay. it's doing that. But yeah, you're right. I mean, 70,626 um, dollars, points, whatever you want to say. Now, here's a, here we go again. Another strategy. This game is just like fantasy football. There's strategy here. Jesse went with five. He decided to hedge a little bit. Not going to go with all six. Not going to go with, you know, the four. I'm going to go with five, he said. And he picked Adam Reiser. Great dude. We have, you know, he go, he's on Paddle and Finn quite a bit as well. And a, a really good stick out there. 36.87 is what Adam's made this year. 
So there's some money there, and that was a good pick. Jody Queen, of course, Ryan Lambert with his 7,000, Russ Snyders, and Jim Ware. Great pick, Jim Ware, yeah. for $4,350. So that's a good way to get to 70000 And all these people are – dude, I mean, I'm telling you right now, the person that's probably in like 30th, 20th place is still has a chance to win this thing because the KBFNC and the TOC pay out – the majority of the money, honestly, in, in the year altogether. So, um, but fifth place for Jesse. Good job, Jesse. Who's next? All right. After Jesse, we got uh, Patty Stewart with 70,441 points. Flipping right. Jammer is her team. Yep. <laughs> team. Team Flipping Jammer. So, yeah, it's just Jody Queen, Russ Snyders, uh, Drew, Drew Gregory again, and then Mel Ash and Josh Booth. So, looking for Mel and Josh to. Hopefully, um, they're in some of these last tournaments to get some points for. Her. And then, who's next here? Number seven. Uh, number seven, uh, Paddle and Finn's own Mr. Brad Hicks. With- eh, we don't care. Good. Go on to the next one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Brad led this for, I think, the probably the last time I talked with you, updating probably about a month ago. He had led it, I think, up until that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was high up there, and then it changed. <laughs> that seems just kind of like his attitude, too. Yeah. Right. He was winning right. Angler of the Year and was like, nah, I don't do this nah. anymore. <laughs> that's that's the Brad. <laughs> that, that's Brad for sure. He's he's a character. So, yeah, Russ Snyders is on his team. Uh, Drew Gregory again. Brian Howe. Uh, Kurt Smith. Richie McMichael. And Damian Tao. Now, I will say this. Damian doesn't have any, any money for him, but it's impressive when you pick five anglers that you know that all cash some some checks because it's not easy you're taking the top 10 percent. most trails pay out the top 10 percent. i guess bass actually pays down 30 places always but it's you know mm-hmm. not much not much but if you think about it it's not that many tournaments when you add it up and then when you think the top 10 percent, usually if there's like average of 100 anglers that's 10 people a lot of times those names are the same right so it's pretty impressive when you can get five especially given the salary cap and you're spending just a few, you know, a few thousand dollars on some of those lower priced anglers that, that have not really made a name for themselves, which is why they were down there. So good, good on him to have. So something, uh, something I'll add about Damien, uh, Damien, his name's always on our shows, winning tournaments out West. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't fish because KBF and these trails haven't been out there. If, if let's say he had came out here and fished or if the trails had reached out there, I think Brad would be blow. Like I know, yeah. I bet you we've mentioned him winning or you know top three ten plus times this year. Like guy has been on fire this season. <laughs> yep. So great pick, just the wrong situation, Brad. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, do you guys want to go any further or? I think that's pretty good right yeah. there. It starts to fall off after yeah. out of the seventies. We just wanted to throw Brad in there because we love him. Exactly. Uh, well, that's, that's questionable. That's thinking, yeah. <laughs> that's but no. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes up going uh, after. You know, we'll get to see it after the NC, and then again after the TOC. Uh, right. So that'll be. How, well, how will that work? Will it hold over for the next classic, or will it cut off after the TOC? Cuts off after the TOC. And then, and then just, the, it, it, the classic's yeah. kind of one of the beginning ones. It's a calendar year thing, this whole thing. Okay. So we want to see we want to see how much money these trails combined and how much money these individuals are making, you know, in winnings in one calendar year. Like how yeah. possible is it? How close are we to somebody, not not someone like myself who has a family or Matt Ball or, or Craig Dye or whoever, but someone who's doing this full time but maybe right now they're, they're still like the younger guys who are single, not as much responsibility. Could someone, when could they start actually, you know, aside from uh, the Christine Fishers with YouTube and the, you know, Greg Blanchers and folks, well, Greg still has a day job, but Christine, you know, obviously full time <laughs> YouTube, social media, fishing tournaments. How, how close are we? I, I just think it's interesting on the business side of the sport. How close are we to getting to where someone could do it full time? Obviously Cody, Milton and some folks like that are, are kind of doing it now, but they supplement, you know, Russ Snyder's is to some degree as well. And so is a, uh, uh, maybe a, a Josh Stewart, I, I think maybe a little bit. He's, he kind of has, I don't know, but Guillermo Gonzalez still, he works for like Temple Fork Outfitters and 
some other, but it's like part-time stuff and he does this part-time. So we're getting, I think, close to where if, if we could get some, a little bit better, not better, I'm saying a little bit higher entry fees, I think we could, we'll start getting more, a little bit more media exposure because the, the amount we win, the big check, you know, each tournament will get bigger. It'll start to get a little bit more recognition. Therefore, you might get a little bit more money from sponsors on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Or, or money just period. Cause a lot of folks right now probably don't get any money. I think we may, we're, we're getting closer within three, four, five years of seeing a lot more, a lot more guys kind of doing this full time when they, if they have the right life situation to, to pull it off, you know what I mean? Right. And there's a, that's an episode I want to have in the off season because something that's countering that actively is, uh, the negativity and stuff around certain things in the sport. <laughs> and I've got something to pass on to you, Drew, that was passed on to me yes. today, yes. an article for you to read. It is very interesting. And it will take you like 45 minutes. Yeah. It's oh, a geez. really long. I wish page. I knew like who a, wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> it was on a fishing page forum of yeah. somewhere and it got passed around all over the place. And, uh, Dan Perry actually sent it to me, but it'll be, it's worth the read. I definitely, yes. And then we'll, once seasons get over with, we'll probably go back to it and talk about it. But it's cool. Like you're on the positive upending side of it. And this is like an article that's showing all of the bad, like right. not, not making us look bad, but like showing certain issues there is. Yeah. And, yeah. And how, how it's looking to these, like, like you're saying, these companies that could be giving this money in, putting this money in how they're looking at it from the outside in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but again, that's for another day. That's a whole episode yeah, I want to oh, have yeah. in a month or two. I'm uh, very interested. In dude, that. And that might, we might have like 10 people in on that one. I think that would be interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I think that might be a good round table discussion. Cause I mean, as I was reading through it, I was just like, you know, this makes a lot of sense. And there's like so many good points in there too. And there's a like, lot of good points, but there's a lot of like straight jabs, but the person, whoever it is who wrote it, they just signed it. Was a J D D J. Yeah. That's only what the only way they that's, signed it on the forum. Yeah. Hmm. But they did not hold back no. anything, but they backed everything up they had with direct quotation and yes, fact. They did. And that's, that's something that takes wow. time. So I was like, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, I, I can't wait to, to see this, oh, man. You got yeah, me, I'll, you got me I'll send it yeah. to you. <laughs> Fascinating, actually, in a sense, because I'm sitting there trying to read it on my phone. I'm like, I got to finish reading this at home. I want like a big screen for this. Oh, I did make like when Dan <laughs> sent it to me, I skimmed through it. I read four mm -hmm. lines and I stopped what I was doing and went in the house. I was like, Oh shit, I got to read this. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we'll get to that later. So the, the second part of what the show was, we wanted to hit on the upcoming events. Uh, yeah. As we were talking about KBF NC is coming up next week. You know, that's the, the teams, the team chat, the, Team Challenge. Series Championship, the Challenge Series Championship, yeah. AOI, ROI, everything goes down at this. They're down at uh, Caddo, right? Uh, Shreveport. So you Shreveport. can actually fish. Caddo is one of the lakes you can fish for sure. Caddo, uh, Red River, I think. Red yeah. River, Black Cypress Bay. There's Cross Lake. There's there's several lakes. Um, Bistano, several that are in bounds. So should be should be fun. We were there, you know, a couple years ago. So, but uh, before. That came from, um, <laughs> but that was Mike, a fun Elsie year. Took, Mike Elsie took the win. It was, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting because it's, that was in the spring. Right. Yep. Mar March back. You're on the not KBFNC. following the spawn anymore. No, Ooh, now you're following now that late, the late feet up. That's mm -hmm. right. It's vegetation. It's going to be totally different water level, clarity, temperature. I mean, it, no one can do the same thing is, is basically what I'm Cheers. saying. So it's going to be, <laughs> yeah, you'll be out. So, so let's uh before we get y'all's thoughts on it and we you know put a little discussion in on it, I'm gonna go over the uh the angler of the year presented by far wide uh standings. So best I can read off of this KBF website, I'm gonna do my best, but uh Daniel I can't pronounce that last name, Balaba. Balaba, sounds good. Okay, he's the your leading angler of the year, and he is list, listed as a rookie, which would mean he's also leading the rookie of the year. Um, he's at 1782 points, and Jody Queen is second place right behind him with 1776. 
Uh, third place, Russ Snyder, 1770. Jimmy McClurkin, also a 1770. And then our very own Drew Gregory coming in at fifth in the KBF Angler of the Year race, which is mm-hmm. awesome, man. You're you're staying pretty yeah, consistent. Right. How, how did you do AOI last year with KBF? Well, here's the thing. I've only been fishing tournaments, like focusing on it full time, if you will, for uh, two years. And last year was a COVID year. And I moved mm. to Ohio and I actually didn't fish enough events to even qualify. I didn't fish three. I fished KBF Pro Tour where I got this. I'm, I'm, I can't point here. The second place <laughs> um, to Jody down in Florida. And then uh, they had these super tournaments. There was a, I only fished basically, I think two all i needed to do was just go to one more like i probably would have been right there and been in the tin house but i didn't really even fully understand what was going on how it works plus it didn't matter (laughs) to me i was busy moving my family up to ohio and switching you know jobs and just everything was kind of crazy so uh, i only got to get in hardcore on the the hobie at the very end and fish those last three events for the hobie bos and obviously ended up winning aoy on that into the toc but so this is what my point is the year before that only fished like five tournaments total. That was the FLW KBF Cup over there in like Wachita when back when there was an FLW. There was uh, one on you know, Chickamauga. There was the Pan American Games thing. There was like like five tournaments total. I fished the cat the national championship where I got the second. So there was only five I fished. So this is my first year where I actually have had a schedule and a life where it was possible to fish enough events in KBF and in, in Hobie and fish bass to qualify qualify for all the championships and or AOIs. So I, I'm, I'm pretty excited, man, how it worked out. No, man, that's a killer Dude, out. that's uh, like stellar, man, to yeah, like thanks. qualify. You know how many years for... it would take me to do that? <laughs> right. To qualify for all of the above. That's like yeah, no small feat. <laughs> I'll be like 45 still going at this and y'all be using like hovercrafts and <laughs> shit and I'll right. still struggle. The rods Just, will uh, cast for you, you know. Yeah, we'll be using winches. Yeah. Because no, it's been it's been fun, man. I appreciate you guys. It's been a fun ride. So we're, yeah, man. we're working hard trying to make it happen, and it's just just worked out. Just all happened to work out this year. Yeah. Uh, something I was going to add to the KBF thing since uh, you kind of hit on it, and I haven't got to watch the video, but um, the KBF has released uh, part of their new schedule, which it's only a couple of dates. But they also uh, are bringing back the KBF Pro Tour for next year. So. Uh, I know like our Brian Schiller fished the pro tour pretty heavy the last year. I think that it was in uh, me and him have talked, you know, according to how that goes, we may do that. We may do bass. We're talking about doing it together. Just it's always fun to run around the country with somebody, you know, and like hold each other accountable. And so as I'm over here talking about getting out of this, me and Brian are like dragging me back into it in another way. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what about you? Either one of y'all, Susie, are you going to step up? I know. I mean, you're a really good angler. You don't give yourself enough credit. Absolutely. Are Are you thinking about taking a step and doing more national stuff? Would Would the KBF Pro Tour be something of interest to you, or maybe just dabble around in a few nationals? I'm waiting to see what everybody else's schedule is going to be for next year before I really make a decision. I don't know if I'm going to be quite there yet in 2022, but a further goal I have might be for 2023 to maybe chase some of the bigger ones. I think my problem was, is like I started really big and going into a lot of these things when I first got into it. And I was also like TD and staff and everything and didn't really get a lot of opportunities to like, you know, prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Prepare and like, you know, experience it just as like an angler or TD, you know, that type of thing. So you know, I've, I've also been trying to work on, you know, like what I want as myself as like an angler in a sense, you know. Um, so like I, I've definitely got some work to do for this next year. But again, you know, I, I am very curious to see where some of the bigger trails are going to be going like Hobie, um, KBF, uh, Bass. I didn't get to uh, compete in any of the Bass events is just a matter of, you know, timing and conflicting with other, you know, events and Schedules, stuff that I had. Okay. Yeah, it, it was very tough, you know, and that was another part of everything, too, is, you know, since there's so much availability of all these tournaments, is like, is it going to get oversaturated or other 
you know, trails and lakes going to start cutting back? Are they going to have more? You know, it, it's yeah. it's curious to see how things are going to be evolving over the couple of years. But yeah. in 2023, I'd like to definitely chase some bigger things. And I'm thinking that I'll hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> be in a better set and state to to be able to do so. Yeah. No, it's yeah, uh, definitely like uh, you can you can jump in it head first too heavy, and like you said, with so many options and so little time, yeah. whether it's time that you take off or doing multiple things like you do and I do, I've got that's part of why I think I've been in the slump that I'm in is mm-hmm. I feel like maybe there's just so much on my plate I'm thinking about all of it more than I'm enjoying anything, right. and that's why I've like. Yep. Like I've turned fishing off for the year. Like I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not all at, which I say that that river tournament in Georgia next weekend sounds like I might have to go check that out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm just t- trying to take a step back, kind of focus on hunting just so it's like something different so that I don't burn out on the fishing thing. And then when next year rolls around can fly right back into it. But right, yeah, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. That, and just, you know, like not saying that like I'm in a bad financial place or anything like that, but like, I think I'll be better set to be able to travel further. I mean, central Illinois going down to Florida and Texas and all Mm -hmm. that, that's like two day drive alone. And then that's time off of work too, Mm -hmm. you know? So that, that kind of eats a chunk of everything, you know, I mean, tell Adam to get another job. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Um, But you know, I mean, we're, we're lucky because, you know, we chose not to have kids or anything like that. And he's like more than supportive and encouraging for, you know, my hobby. It's just, you know, again, like, you know, money and stuff like that, you know, and I would like to see Uh the kayak fishing industry, get bigger to where we have these bigger sponsors real financial support in yes to these big tournaments for these bigger payouts so it can right. be worthwhile for these anglers yeah 100 percent. Yeah. yeah you're on your way i'm telling you, you got a good plan if you think about it a lot of the guys even guys fishing the bassmaster elite series and you know the, the toyota series the tackle warehouse pro circuit i mean there's so many you can name the mpfl it like that that's actually kind of dubbed the working man's trail it's five thousand dollar entry fee tons of money being one but they're all jetting back going to work on monday still too so yeah right it's it's yeah. hard even at those levels to make a living doing it only the a certain number so uh, anyway the point is i think you're wise to you don't just jump in kind of blindly at this because you you also can not even have a chance to fish anymore if you blow all your money and then you're like how am i gonna so right. it's smart. You're, you're taking a smart yeah. path. <laughs> Obviously, so. So, uh, so, so this one's for Drew. Drew talking about KBF bringing back the pro tour. Is that something that you're going to jump in on? You know, I, I like, like Susie said, again, she's, she's wise over here. She's going to wait, look at all the schedules and I want to see some more information of what, what's the payout. Uh, I mean, yes. not the, payout, the entry fee, which obviously equates mm-hmm. to the payout, but I, w- I want to know what the entry fee is. And, and actually I don't, is the pro tour a separate, tour or is it held in conjunction with because it used yeah. to that, that first year right. when, when I, i'd finished second here i can never get it right i always point the <laughs> wrong, over the wrong shoulder this thing's backwards but that was a separate tour of i think six events in a championship or something so it was right it was different not, yeah it was different. it was actually a separate series so if they would take it to a level of 500 dollars entry fees or a thousand which is what i want to see uh, you know i'd love to see i mean i'd love to see it 2,500 to 5,000, but that's, that's, we got to build there. Obviously I think like, like I definitely agree with that, the build there, but I think this would be a golden opportunity. Um, you know, KBF, sometimes they have uh, some negative stuff that chases them. I was saying this to somebody this week that KBF has what I would call been quiet this year and not like they're not doing anything. They've had bad numbers. They haven't people show up, people fish, you know, but you haven't been here in the negative. There's not been a lot of, Hey, look at me. Hey, look at us. And, you know, kind of like revamping what they're good at. And, you know, the NC is going to be a big factor of how true is that? You know, the issues last year with tourney X or whatever, you know, at the end of it, what happens, everybody will be looking, but they have a golden opportunity. I think they could take the pro tour thing and they could put slap 500 or a thousand dollars on it right now. And that might turn a head towards them from maybe the national anglers that aren't competing with them right now. The bigger names that maybe don't 
put their hat in the KBF. I mean, you're looking at thousand dollar entry and giant payout. You might be like, well, put my ego back over here, <laughs> go cash me a fatty check. So, yeah. because if you're trying to do it for a living as a businessman, you look for the dollar. And I mean, that uh, sounds horrible, yeah. but you have to, if you're trying to make a living with it, you yep. can't, I mean, you can yeah. do the low end struggle for it, but if you're trying to stand out and not have yeah. to have a job, not have to have supplemental income, and if somebody's like to, drop a yeah. thousand bucks, we'll pay you a hundred G's for a win. I mean, that's right. not what it's going to be, but you get what I'm saying, sure. and, you know, that's where you're exactly. going to go. And it's, and it's also, it, it's like, it's a exponentially, uh, it's like an exponential thing. So if the payouts become bigger and then the exposure becomes bigger. So therefore now you get more money from your sponsors. So it compounds on each other. So it actually is, is yeah, better. Com- all a so company you- wants their name on a check that says $50,000 yeah. mm-hmm. on it. Like they're like, Hey, I helped with that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, it's against the most elite level of anglers. Cause no one is no one in the right mind. You know, as Susie just talked about, she's going to be smart. No one in the right mind is going to spend a thousand bucks or 15 or 15 or $2,500 or 5,000 on an entry fee. Unless you are like, you know, you're confident. You are exactly. in you're that confident. level. At that I level, dropped 250 did. five times this year. No one. I didn't have a chance in hell, but I enjoyed myself. <laughs> I right. will not do that for a thousand. I might come share a house with you and hang out. But that's yeah. where that ends. I'm not dropping thousand yeah. dollars on turn. And for people on a budget and stuff like that too, you know, like if you would like to go pro, but maybe you just can't because of that budget thing too. You know, that's another factor sometimes. Just like I'd love to go pro. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like right. mm, I can't really. Show I'll, I'll go pro when a company pays for it, which this right. is the direction yeah, that's, that's the going. Other part of it too. So yeah. it's just like once we get there, then that's when I think we're really gonna see people hitting things. hard hard and harder yeah because like once you get that top sponsor payout and that top sponsor who is you know paying for anglers entry fees and like like the big bass boat word world it's yep. it'll change dramatically yep and then uh, hopefully with all with money like that and events like that we'll we'll get some sort of live stream in some way whether mm-hmm. it's just f- five anglers on the final day mate whether it's just the top five or right. whatever something because then that goes back to the sponsors why are they going to pay your entry fee you know why are they going to give you more money well now you can say well we're, we're live streaming to this many people and we're you know it's the same thing that the elite series and the mlf guys are are selling to their sponsors so it's it's a tough game man. it's a tough business you don't just have to be good at fishing you got to be good at selling yourself to these companies to give you the money to go fishing. It's like, you got to be good at all of it to even be able right. to fish. It's crazy. Exactly. exactly. Hard, hard, hard game. But anyway, the, um, the schedule, I didn't know there was any KBF, uh, trail series schedule, uh, schedules out, but it looks like you're right. There are some on. Just yeah. The fishing app, bit, yeah. But, so C- Kissimmee has been out all year, uh, which it, yep. it coincides with the, yep. the, the 10 and the 10 invitational like normal. Um, I will make that one this year. I missed it last year. We had a, I think it was a scheduling conflict. I can't remember or work or something, but it's on the list and I'm going this year. So Drew, you think you're going to make that one? I believe so. Um, you we know, we little, need to talk little, house then. <laughs> our, little girl, our little girl. Yeah, that's right. Our little girl comes, Sophia. She'll be due on eight, or, I'm sorry, December 26th. So <gasps> if we'll be pushing yeah. it close. It'll be it'll be interesting to see if I can uh, swing that one or not because if she comes early and we've got some in law help here and and obviously it may depend too if I make the ten which I, right now just so everyone if you're listening you don't understand what the ten is and the ten invitational the ten are the top ten anglers at the end of the AOI race for KBF right for the trail series so plus they have a couple other I think the challenge series winner and then one other there's like so basically there's like up to 12 people in in the quote the 10 it's a TV show and the 10 fish for there's 10 anglers basically or more whatever a couple more but they fish for $10,000 and everybody gets at least a thousand I think seconds five third mm-hmm. is three two whatever it's a lot of money for for not many people but you also get a bunch of prizes gifts a lot of you get, stuff you get your house paid. yeah it's like the real world you know you're like in this live I mean, this, uh, you know, house with all these people, you know, living there all together in this mansion in Florida. So you want to make the 10. That's like what you're trying to do and what I set out to do this year. Anyway, that's um, how it all shakes down at the championship. So. Uh, so, yeah, that that's. Uh, so hopefully if I make that, I'll I'll be able to swing it. Yeah. 
So that, that's at the end of January uh, alongside the KBF trail on the Kissimmee chain. Mm-hmm. And then going into f- the beginning of February, you've got the month challenge series. And then uh, February 19th and 20th, KBF will be at Lake Shasta and uh, doing the same two day thing they did this year. And then uh, February 26th and 27th. So not wasting any time. They're getting right back yeah. to another one. They'll be doing uh, Lake Mary in South Carolina. And Lake Shasta's in Cali for anybody that yeah, doesn't know. Right. And it's which is cool because the Cali needs some West Coast love. So they do. And because I'll tell you right now, because there's only a Shasta one and a Shasta two, that tells me there will be another event West Coast. Because this year they were at Clear Lake and they did a one, two, three. They three, did yep, three. Yep. And it's right in one weekend. So there's no way you can qualify if the, the Angler of the Year race, just again, people are listening. If you're new, if you're new to this, the Angler of the Year race on both KBF and Hobie. It's your best three finishes. You can fish as many events as you want. Like you can fish all 10 Hobies, but only your best three finishes, you know, your score, AOI score is going to count. So same with, with KBF. So that tells us that there's going to be another West coast event because there's only two there and they want to give those, those folks out West a chance to qualify exactly. to win the AOI at the, and come to the national championship where it's all settled. Susie, do you, do you dabble with KBF any? Um, I used to. I haven't in a while just because they haven't really had many events that have been really close. Like I wanted to do St. Clair, but again, it was a schedule conflict with a uh, local club that I help out with. Um, And, you know, I've done the national championship for three years, I believe now, because we didn't do it last year because of COVID. Um, Not doing it this year. But, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of how everything started for me, too, was uh, 2017, you know, got, getting 11th place out of 368 anglers. I was like, oh, maybe I do know how to do something. I don't here. suck. <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was still just like, holy crap. Um, that, but I haven't awesome. in, in a while, though. But, um, you know, and I know that there's been a lot of um, dislike and frustration with the new Fishing Chaos app and all that other stuff. So I'm also kind kind of waiting to see how all of that kind of plays out just to see how it improves um you know what uh, changes they're gonna make and then you know yeah the the pro series and all the other events that they'll come out with for next year for sure yeah there, there's definitely pros and cons to the to the fishing chaos and i'm sure like all the apps in the off season will continue to improve yeah the thing i do i will say this i do like uh, a couple things i like the when it uploads your photo, it gives you the percentage so you know it's happening, it's it's working, it's still going. That's okay. kind of cool. The other thing I like about it is the, that it does allow KBF the ability to have the AOI uh, standings, not just like live and updated right after the tournament's over. It's like live during the tournament on every, oh, single, wow. every single fish catch. The AOI is changing instantly. So you can follow oh, wow. along the AOI race instantly. So there's some cool wow, things cool. about it. Yeah, there's definitely some cool things about it. It is it is a little bit more, it's not as intuitive as Tourney X is. Tourney X is very simple, easy to use. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see how, like you said, Jimmy, earlier, we'll see how on the back end, if Fishing Chaos can handle the yeah. amount that, that's going on at the KBF and C, which is why they, they ultimately, you know, said they were making the switch. So Yeah, I was I, just going to ask, because the NC is on Fishing Chaos, right? Yep. Okay. And so is it... I know you can go online and look at, you know, the live standings and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's pretty up to date too, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, to, to my yeah. knowledge. Yeah. It, it updates. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. instantaneously. And, and that, that's yeah. kind of how to, out of touch I've been with KBF this year. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And it should be able to handle this team component as well. So oh, yeah. we, yep. sh- we should have standings for that and maybe, and, and the trail, so it can handle multiple events happening under one event. So the trail series oh, okay. championship, the challenge series, we'll see how it all shakes out. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, that that's pretty exciting. And I guess uh, we'll see what KBF, you know, what they do next year. I know Chad said he's going to, at the, at the Kentucky Lake event, he did tell us, you know, hey, he's going to, there's going to be some changes next year. He's going to step back a little bit more, maybe get some other people out at some of those events. And he, he might do some stuff remotely because he, he does want to spend some more time with, you know, the, the things that matter in life and his priorities have changed a little bit. And that's, it, I mean, I was glad to hear it when he was telling us that the Kentucky Lake, I mean, the guy has been putting in a lot of, a lot of work, you know, whether you, you know, 
look, whether you agree with everything Chad does in the past and in the future, now, whatever you do, you don't, he's polarizing. I get it, but no one can deny, of course, that he, you know, has, has done so much to get this sport to where we are so much work. So I'm kind of personally glad to hear him saying he, he wants to do some stuff for himself, take a step back a little bit. It doesn't mean KBF's taking, taking any step backs. No, just, He's just saying he is personally. And I actually am, am happy for him that he's going to be able to do some stuff for himself. And cause he has given so much and, and, like, like he said to us there, I mean, they are, I mean, they've been running in a deficit. It's not, it has not been easy, but it's got us to where we are and it's opened the doors for other organizations like Hobie and Bass. And so kudos on them for that. And, uh, and I'm, I'm always going to be pro all the trails, all the series, even if I speak out uh, openly, um, you know, not, not against them, but I'm saying if I, if I disagree with something they do or whatever, I'm still I'm not afraid to talk about it at least, but, but right. respectfully. And so exactly, anyway, we'll see what happens here with KBF, but looking forward to, to good things. Yeah. So, and, uh, I'll go ahead too. yeah, I was just also going to say too. Yeah. I was kind of excited to see that they're returning to Kentucky Lake next year. So I'm like, well, I definitely fish there in the yeah. spring. So I'm like, I'm very curious to see what it might be in the fall. So I might try to qualify for that next year. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Nice. <laughs> So uh, going on from there, we, we'll, we'll talk about Hobie a little bit here, too. So uh, we'll hit their Angler of the Year standings. We'll hit that top ten real quick. Uh, first place, Ewing Miner. Uh, he's been killing it all year. He's up there at 298.60. Uh, Drew Gregory right behind him with 294.10. So it, it's coming down to the wire. Uh, on, will I'm, I'm trying to defend, will Drew buddy. sneak in? <laughs> will drew sneak in again i think so yeah uh third place brian howell uh 294 10 he's or i'm sorry 294 even he's right on your tail uh guillermo gonzalez has slid up into fourth russ snyder's yep. in fifth jay wallen in sixth cody milton seventh jordan marshall eighth brian delani ninth and my man adam riser in tenth oh, now a yeah. uh, cool little f- stat right here is that Russ and Drew are the only two of the anglers that you will see in the top five and top ten in both of these uh, na- big national AOI runnings, which is pretty cool. That's that's yeah, consistency great. in both hey. and a lot of time. But uh, good job, good job, Russ, man. And I'm not surprised hearing his name there for sure. Yeah, no, Russ is it's he's been kind of a gimme the last two years, like. Yeah, oh yeah. He, uh, I mean, he'll have one event where he doesn't do as good as he did, but it's still like he'd still take my money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, he's he's doing great, and Drew, you've been doing good, and it's it's going to be cool to see how that one plays out. I mean, as well as the again, y'all are both in the top five. It could go any way in the KBF. Oh, yeah. And look, Ewing Minor, you know, you know, he and like Daniel does in KBF. They they both hold their their own you know, control their own destiny. So you right. been crushing it. I mean, it's going to be tough. Brian Howe has been killing it all year long. These guys, like you said, Russ right behind me and Guillermo. Guillermo's got Guillermo some right momentum. And then Russ, he's got momentum. Exactly. And all the way down to the 10th place, like you said, Adam Reiser, they're in the hunt. Here's why I'm going to explain why the Hobie TOC is so volatile. Um, the Hobie series runs with a hundred points for a- AOI. If you win an event, now at the TOC that changes it. Well, it changes somewhat. It, uh, it's still 100 points, but in the regular season it goes 100, 99, 98, 97, and so forth. Down, you know, from first, second, third, fourth, and on. At the TOC it goes by two point increments, so it's like 100, 98, 96. So there's a bigger gap in points between the places. So you can make up some lost ground quickly. You can. And KBF's the same way. They give 600 points for a win, but in the at the championship it's 900. So it's point and a half. It's 1.5 times the regular amount. So you can make up some big, big gaps. So, and you're competing against the 50 top anglers. So they're good. So it's not exactly easy to just nope. be in the top 10. So everyone down to Adam for sure is, is still in the hunt for the actual and Ad- AOI Adam is one of those that you have to watch Adam. For like sure. we have him on here. You said earlier, Adam's a frequent guest on the show. He's a friend of mine. I love the guy to death. He's awesome. full of information. He is an electronics really cool guru. Like he is someone to look out for because I feel like he's coming into his own, like especially like down around Tennessee, Alabama. Like you really have to watch that guy. Like he knows these water. I don't know how well he knows you follow 
or if he's got any experience on it. And I haven't been bothering him because I know he's preparing, <laughs> but he's like, Drew, I do. It'd be cool to see you repeat, but it's gonna be tough. I, I would also like to see Adam kind of just hit a big one and blow everybody's minds. That'd be cool. That'd be cool, man. I mean, he's a good dude, so I, I'd like to see it as well. If I don't, if I don't take it, but um, which you know, let's face it, it's gonna be hard to do because also the TOC. What's changed this year? Uh, everyone, the TOC used to be two day event. This year it's three day. So here, just, let me just, let me just paint a picture for you real quick. We like you follow. We fish like you follow for the Bass Nation Kayak Series in May. Um, Russ Snyder's one. Uh, I, I think I got seventh in that one. But listen to this: 25, 25 anglers, right? We're in that event. I'm sorry, hundred anglers were in the event. Twenty five anglers uh, caught a limit, and we're this is a one day tournament. Only twenty five in May. We're talking about November. Where the the lake's been beat to death. It's hard. I mean, if you look at MPFL was there, MLF was there. It's a very tough fishery. It's been tough last few years. So it's going to be a grind. If you catch just 15 fish, if you get five a day, you're probably in the top 10. I bet you only 10 people, maybe 15 catch five a day because it's just, it's going to be that hard. So I think you can make a big jump uh, in this event from maybe, to, you know, seven, seven, eight, ninth place. So it's definitely, it's going to, it's where strategy is going to come into play. You know, do you give the first two days to catch in just a decent limit, you know, not really swinging and then, okay, my two days secured me into striking distance. Do I go out and swing for the fence on day three and only look for the big bites or, you know, it, you can play it. However, you know, weather will come into play, you know, the yeah. timing, yeah. you know, oh, the, yeah. You follow as early as far as the South goes. They usually get into their like pre-spawn and spawn stuff faster than we do. But at the same time, they're going to stay a little bit warmer longer. So how the fish are acting could be different than what you're ready for. But I mean, everybody, you know, there's pre-fishing and stuff. It'll get figured out. But I think you, just like you said, you follow can, it's known to be a big bass factory. That's, I mean, MLF went there and they, they did an amazing, amazing tournament there there were fish all over the place caught in that for however many days but it will humble you in oh, a hurry like yes, just lights out it will shut you down so it's gonna be fun to watch you're gonna I, it, it'll be cool to see i didn't i didn't keep up with the toc last year uh i don't really know why i think that actually last year i was just now getting into this stuff by then hell i can't remember but uh i'll definitely be paying attention this, you know, Tourney X will be on my phone all day. We'll be getting the yep. rundown of that. It's going to be tough. Uh, it's going to be ele electronics, I think. What Adam's doing, I think that's going to be... That's what I think is going to make him uh, dangerous. Him, I Cody Milton. Be a live scoping sort of electronics game. And I also say that because if you've anyone's actually paid attention yet, anybody in the TOC that's registered, the, there's there's some boundaries that we have to deal with in this event that's not not really, I would say you know typical boundaries for hobie we actually only can go up the lake i want to say it's from the dam only 37 miles up the lake and the lake according to you know if you look online the lake's like 80 miles long the the, the you follow us from columbus georgia basically down to the dam and i think it's only about 37 you know miles up to the boundary we have going up the lake you know slash river whatever um and it really doesn't turn into true river to way way up there near columbus but that cuts off a lot of water and, and going up the creeks, there's some boundaries we have to kind of launch on some more closer kind of to the main lake and those Creek arms, those co you know, the whole arms of the lake. So to get in into any, you know, smaller, skinnier water, you, you got to go uh, paddle or pedal a, a pretty good way. So we're it's, it just feels like it's going to be more of an electronics main lake sort of event because that's kind of where we're, you know, we're, we're all kind of having to launch from anyway. Now people can make a long run, but, I, I don't think I don't think it's gonna work that way. I think it's gonna be, you know, like you're saying, technology is gonna gonna maybe rule in this one. Yeah, I, I definitely think that that and that's that's kind of why I just because me and you had talked and I knew about the boundaries and stuff and like a couple of those names, like yeah. I said, Adam and Cody, they're We're good at they it. are strong electronics guys. And there's, I mean, that's you see that within bass boats, man, when they hit the ledges on. Uh, Kentucky Lake or Pickwick, the guys that excel, and it's not even like you said, live scope. Like, I, unless he's changed, I know Adam's a hummingbird god. 
I, I know I know mm-hmm. a couple of people that were almost getting rid of their units and talk about going fishing with Adam turning around and Adam being back there with their screen pressing buttons and then hand it back to him and they're like holy shit what'd you do <laughs> like look how clear this is like he, That's cool. he knows what, yeah he's he's good I, and Cody's the same way yeah, yeah, like I didn't talk to Adam and learn <laughs> a few things because I, I didn't know style. he was that good with it. And when I found that out from a buddy a couple weekends ago, I was like, "Well, I might just have to switch back over to Humminbird just because that was why I got rid of it." Man, I could never get the settings right. And yeah, now I know that he's that good with it. I want to, hey, buddy, help me yeah, out. Absolutely, I'm I need struggling. to find a, uh, a Lawrence guru. You know how you do that? You get rid of it. No, I just got a new <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the last thing I wanted to go over with the Hobie uh, before we close it out, uh, they just released the first five of their events for next year. So uh, starting off at Toledo Bend in Louisiana, February 12th and 13th, which sounds exciting. I'd like to hit that one. Uh, Sandy Cooper in Manning, South Carolina, March 26th and 27th. Back to Lake Eufaula in Alabama, April 23rd and 24th. Uh, they're going back to visit Broken Bow Lake in Broken Bow, Oklahoma, May 14th and 15th, and then Lake Chickamauga in Dayton, Tennessee, June 4th and 5th. Chickamauga is going to be a good one, I think, because Chick shows out, and that, that's, I mean, a lot of your Tennessee hammers, that's the lake that, that's their lake, so. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool little release. Uh, one thing I'm going to add to this is we tried to get a bass schedule release, but we all know that didn't happen. So I leaned all into Dwayne Wally about it. And he said, man, I've been asking and asking and asking. It's not on me. I said, well, is it John Stewart? And he said, yes. Yeah. So John, this is, this is for you. You probably don't listen to this, but maybe someone passes along. Stop waiting. Be like everybody else. I understand Bassmaster does this thing, but you're part of our world too. We need it now. So we'll give it, give us a little, give me two. You told us in Texas, you told us in Texas that you had two years ready to go. You were waiting to file like two events. We'd have two years of schedule. So we'd like to hear it. So pressure's on you. Yeah. Hopefully we can get that soon. I know they were potentially, uh, cause I was, I had talked with Dwayne and, and John a little bit and they were potentially looking at, you know, adding maybe. So I know they had the schedule probably done, but then when I got in the ear about maybe adding some more <laughs> events, it may, they may have actually, I might've hurt us here. It might be my fault. Right. No, so I, damn it, you know, if they are, <laughs> first of all, Hey, I'll wait a few more weeks or a month to have extra events at Bass. If that's no, I, I know. I feel you on that. If that's but, what the wait is, is a last minute surge for a couple more. No, it's cool. Yeah. So hopefully, but, but you could at least give us the first three. Give me two. Yeah. Yeah, tease us. Where are we opening? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Are we going back to Lake Fork? I want to go back to Lake Fork. Lake Fork was yeah. amazing. I want to do it again. Yeah. I want to play with sure. that alligator and, again. And they did just announce their Bass Nation um, schedule. The actual, like the the some one of the Bass Nation schedules they've done the Elite Series. I think, I think we're close. I think we're just the bottom of the list. It's an order they're following, and they have a lot more going on than Hobie and KBF because they've got so many exactly. other tournaments they're running. So it's just. Not that we're at the bottom of their list because I know they care a lot about kayak, but they're we're just the you know the last we're the new thing still. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's going to get announced, and they got to get other stuff and all their ducks in a row there because that's where they're really making you know their money. So they got to get that, that, that taken care of. So, yeah, my, that right that's now. my 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 pressure would be. I think we we would appreciate just a little teaser, like you give me where we are starting the season off. That'd be gold. Give me or, that or first where, lake. Yeah. First lake and tell us what lake we're going to be fishing at the class during the classic. You know, that the would be valid information too. That'd be cool. I have a feeling <laughs> that it's going to be one of the ones you know right above, or right below Hartwell. So Kiwi or I think it's Russell. So I think we'll I, my I think I was talking to some of the guys. I think it will be Russell, which would be I, I've heard from some of the locals that Russell's a really good one. So awesome. Well. well I'm excited, uh, man. Good yeah. schedule. Good schedule for Hobie. Uh, the only thing I'll say too is I, I like the schedule. And with KBF, I'll say the same thing. It's like, man, I like the schedule, but I wish we didn't have. You know, I guess we have to have some re, you know, retreads the same, uh, you know, locations. But man, it'd be so cool to get to some stretch out uh, some new locations. Some of them on there, I think, were. I mean, but even a place like Toledo Bend is it's new, but it's not. You know what I mean? Like it's new and might be new for Hobie. Recent but... years, right? But. 
you know, some new lakes that no one is even like really considered or heard of because we don't have all the, cons you know, the constraints of cell signal for live streaming that we have to, we're bound by, you know what I mean? We don't have the constraints of the, a lake that's a certain size. We can even do like KBF is doing for the national championship or like they're doing down in, you know, the Kissimmee chain and you can have a chain of lakes and they don't have to even be all connected. So some unique stuff like that. That's what I'm dying for in kayak fishing. We got kayaks to fish those kind of lakes and those waters and the exactly. smaller and the, and the rivers like, like Hobie does with the, the Mississippi Susky. river and the Susky. And let's, I, I, but I get it. It's easy. It's, it's, it's easy for them to go right back to the same tourism department that supported them. And is very happy with, with what's going on and us going there and bringing, you know, some, some tourism econ dollars. economy, some tourism dollars. So I get it. But anyway, I just want to see some new stuff and it's hard work guys being yes. a TD and making those deals happen. You got to get, the word out there and talk to like, you know, maybe, maybe 10 or 20 of them before you get one that's like, yeah, we have the budget, we can do it. So I don't want to get into it all now, but that's the only thing I'll say about that is it's, I am you know dying for some, some fresh, some fresh places. So and, we need some uh, freshness. A few more. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, uh, the last thing right. we have to cover before we get out of here, as usual, we got a few tournaments that happen to go over. So we got it right here. Uh, kayak anglers of central Pennsylvania had the kit cancers ass charity event, uh, 27 anglers, five fish limit. First place, Josh Sims with 93 and a half. Second place, Corey Linker with 89 and a half. Third place, Greg Wamsley with 86 and three quarter. The kayak anglers of Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, AOI event number five was on the North branch of the Susky 25 anglers, three fish limit. Jordan Welver first place with 53 inches. Second place, Dustin Theobald with 49 and a half. Third place, Eric Wimmer with 48 and three quarter. And after that, we had the Central Carolina kayak fishing. They were on Falls Lake. 43 anglers, five fish limit. First place, Eric Nelson with 83 and a half. Second place, Henry Vegian with 81 and a half. Third place, Justin Finger with 73. So pretty good one. Uh, 83 and a half, though. That's a five fish. That's a, that's a tough day. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail was at a Rocky Fort Paint Creek in Hillsboro, Ohio. 45 anglers, five fish limit. First place, Sean Skidmore with 80 and a half. Second place, Joel No with 72 and three quarters. Maybe now, not sure about that one. Third place, Everett Sheets with 72 and three quarters. Um, moving on from there, just a few left. Cumberland Kayak Trail, uh, Percy Priest Lake in Tennessee, 27 anglers, three fish limit. First place, Richard Clemens with 53 and a half. Second place, Noah Guest with 53 and a quarter. And third place, the former Noobs host, Ryan Milford with 51 and three quarters. He has been talking about that freaking event for like two months. Congrats, my dude. You cashed your check and you were right on par with what you were saying it was going to take. So good job, man. Cool to see you come from the noob status up to Maybe a check cash, no man. <laughs> but I'm going to throw it out there. I think Sean's still kicking his ass in total fish for the year. Because Sean has been smoking the Susky oh, Smallies. Smallies. <laughs> but uh, I miss last I miss two. Him. Yeah. Last two All-American Kayak Series. It was on uh, Truman Lake. 38 anglers, five fish limit. First place, Matt Hines with 85 and a half. Second place, Jared Fosnow with 82. Third place, Josiah Meter with 78. And last but not least, the 2021 Kayak Fishing Utah Bass Tour State Championship. Uh, day one was at San Hollow State Park. Um, day two, the top 50% were at Quail Creek State Park. And the day two, bottom 50% were at San Hollow State Park. So that's kind of cool. Split everybody up. If you're in the bottom half, you might get the shittier body of water. But uh, 28 anglers, five fish limit, first place, total score, Corey Anderson with 152 and a quarter, second place, Wade Lish with 149 and a half, and third place, Jackie Lou with 149 and a quarter. I probably butchered that, and I'm sorry, but congrats to all those folks. Big congrats to Milford. We love you, Milford. Good job, man. I'm I'm proud of you. Nice job. And, uh, and that's it. We talked a whole bunch of tourney. We went on a little longer than normal, but we covered a bunch of stuff. Shout out a good tournament. Everybody remember yep. to check out the Peach State Kayak Anglers event that they got coming up. A uh, bunch of money, maybe a thousand bucks for big fish per day. Uh, at least two kayaks are being given away. So if you're in the area or you're on your way home from the NC, maybe the NC didn't go your way and you want to, you know, put a little money back in your pocket, 
go drop the hundred and twenty five dollars and catch up with them and win some money. Great. But yeah, let us close it out. Susie, got anything else you want to say? Susie's down there. Ah. <laughs> um, eh, not really. Just uh, yeah. Eat your Wheaties. Okay. <laughs> Drew, right. anything else, buddy? Hey, man, just just glad to be here after my incident. You know, an hour and a half ago, yeah. two hours ago, whatever that's that was. Right. Glad to be here. Glad that I'm okay. And glad I'm still going to be able to fish. <laughs> so, and, and, uh, Live to and, see another day. Yeah, vo- voice is a little bit kind of rough and throat hurts a little bit, but hey, it could be a lot worse. Yes, so, it could. I'm happy to be that's here. Right. So we'll we'll see what happens at these events. You guys wish me luck. I'm heading out on uh, when do I leave for this event? I leave on I want to say Friday. Friday night, late, I have to leave. So I got a 16-hour drive, but uh, wish me luck. And uh, I guess next week I will not be on the show. I'll be uh, – Yeah, no, no, he's busy. cool. That's, that's the night before the tournament. Yeah, yeah no, I, you you have to be well, here because yeah. you have to talk about <laughs> yeah. your game plan. That's right. Just live stream it from the kayak, man. Just, like, yeah, yeah. While, while you're pre-fishing, just Drop do me a re- <laughs> recording of, like – some piss That'd sucks cool. or i'm Way doing more. really good <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're like hey there's a gator stuff. there <laughs> yeah for sure so you guys be thinking about me on tuesday night when you record and uh i'll just be grinding away at the maps i'm sure freaking out about game plan what i'm gonna do that first morning next next morning on wednesday when when the uh i guess the next episode will air on wednesday so. that's right all right Heck well uh appreciate y'all joining me like usual uh great show uh we will see you next week as you said he won't be here uh we'll get a filling guest we will probably cover I don't know. I have no idea. We'll figure it out. We may we may stretch for some tournament directors or maybe there'll be something. We'll figure it out. But uh as always, we appreciate everything you do. Like, share, follow us, check us out on all of our socials, and we will see you next week. Good night. See ya. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button, and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.